Okay, so this is one of the weirdest TVs and also at the same time coolest TVs I've ever seen because I think it's technically not a TV. <laughs> Let me turn on my flash here. So you can see this is a Sony uh, Trinitron and it's, yeah, you see it's one of the older ones of the, yeah, it has the three colors there. So for like from the 80s, you can see another Trinitron over here I have that's from the 70s where they use those same red, green, and blue <laughs> symbols there. Um, but yeah, this thing, why I say this is such a weird TV is because I don't think it really is a TV. I think it's more of a like professional monitor kind of, but man, it sure looks like a TV on the outside, but it has some very distinctive features that, yeah, make it look like a monitor. So first off, I mean, it does have a speaker, so that makes it at least a little TV-like. But yeah, as we make our way around here on the to the back, let's see. So now check this out. There are BNC connectors <laughs> on ports on this on the back of this TV slash monitor. Yeah, and so I have a, a BNC to RCA converter here for the Nintendo 64 composite video going in. There's just audio. Uh, video. They say you're not supposed to combine these channels for stereo, converting stereo to mono, but it works for me, and I don't know, I think it's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it even has this 75 ohm terminator switch on it, which, you know, if you're doing output with one of these, then you would turn it to off, and then, you know, you just keep on outputting it to a bunch of different monitors, and then just at the end of the chain, your last monitor, you want to make sure you have that on, otherwise all the monitors will be too bright. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I have it on right now because I'm not outputting anything. But anyway, just long story short, all this stuff just screams like a monitor. <laughs> if, this make, if that makes sense. And see the back here. So yeah, it's a Sony Trinitron Color TV. So it does say TV back here. Um, but yeah, it, <laughs> very interesting. Yeah, you can see it's a model number SSM20. Uh, or SSM-2010 and from June of 1989 and then this is interesting up here you can see this is property of uh, College of Eastern Utah Price Utah um, so yeah so I bought it from a school I didn't buy it from this school so I'm not sure <laughs> I don't know how this got passed around but uh, anyway I bought it from a school where they um, They've sell they've sold other like professional monitors and stuff there. And so and I've actually seen this sticker on some of their other monitors that I've bought. So yeah, I think that they just had like a bunch of display monitors. And yeah, I guess this is just one of them. I don't I've like I said, I've never seen a consumer TV with like a PNC cable on it. So yeah, this is definitely fitted for more professional use for sure. It's also interesting because this does not have a coaxial input on it, <laughs> which I mean, pretty much all TVs have that, you know, they have a tuner on it. But yeah, this does not, this only has composite in. So yeah, no RF tuners, which makes me even more think that this is not really a TV. It's yeah, really supposed to be a monitor. And then I'm just curious, if I use my Sony remote control for my um, XBR 960 down here, HTCRT. Will this work with an IR remote? Kind of thinking it might not because it is a monitor. <laughs> I mean, it, I don't know. It seems like a monitor. Usually, those don't work with the uh, IR remotes. Yeah, and it doesn't look like it is. But I mean, this kind of looks like an IR sensor here. So I don't know. Let's try a different one. These Sony remotes all do the same power on code, so it should work no matter which one you do. This is my Sony OLED remote. <laughs> yeah, it's not working. Um, yeah, you can see, you can turn on, say so use the OLED remote on the XBR960, and yeah, that works. So yeah, yeah, these all, all these Sony remotes use the same <laughs> IR codes for the most part. But yeah, and then just to show you, this is another Tron, uh, Trinitron monitor. This one really is a monitor too, by the way. Although it actually does, you can attach these two speakers on the side. This is a 2530. Um, yeah, also from, I think the eighties, if I'm not mistaken, but yeah, the remote actually does work on this monitor. You can see I push it 
and yeah it starts to turn on I don't have anything plugged into it right now to show you the screen turn on but yeah you can see it does turn on then turn it off turns off so anyway just interesting that this monitor does work with remote about the same time period even has the exact same Trinitron logo up there with the red green and blue circles or ovals uh, but yeah this one works with a remote control and the other one which actually says TV on the back does not <laughs> so yeah uh, makes me think even more that that <laughs> it's not a monitor but rather a TV I mean sorry it's not a TV but rather a monitor but then following that to its logical conclusion would that mean that this 2530 is a TV and not a monitor <laughs> I'd say not I'm gonna say that probably what makes a TV a TV and what makes a monitor a monitor is if it's able to get television signals over the air. <laughs> so like if it has a, a tuner built in of some kind, then it's probably a TV. And if it doesn't, then it's a monitor. So yeah, this doesn't have a, a tuner built in. So I'm going to say this is a monitor. And the other TV slash monitor, this one, is also a monitor because it doesn't have a tuner built in. Okay, and then I'm just curious. I'm going to take off the back of this. By the way, this does have a TV tuner like antenna slot at the top. So I'm actually thinking that this might be as like this is generally like a TV model, but then they just like fitted it to be monitor ish or at least have monitor inputs on the back. But yeah, I'm also curious this like. If this really was an originally a TV model, like it says on the back, and it just fitted it to be more of a monitor, does it actually have a tuner inside still? <laughs> I'm going to think probably not, but let's find out. First off, it looks really clean. Holy cow, this thing looks like it hasn't been used at all. Because usually when these things have a high hours, I think all the, the high voltage attracts a lot of dust. But man, this thing looks like really clean yeah, like there's a little bit that comes off when I touch that but not very much yeah impressive I love I love it when I get CRTs that <laughs> look like they've hardly been used at all although if you saw that other video which I'll link above where I actually had another CRT which had been used a ton and had been turned on all the time uh, like pretty much just been left on for like background noise uh, an older lady had it on all the time and um, yeah that actually still had a pretty decent picture you can see that video I did but yeah just looking at this yeah I mean the board just looks super clean and everything this was I was I was actually expecting this to be like very very dusty in here <laughs> if it was like a monitor where they were piping something in like maybe it was using like I don't know if it was a school maybe it was using like a production class or something or like they were piping something in and they would, you know, having then having it come out to like a smaller, more professional monitor. I actually also picked up a JVC monitor at that school, which you can see here. But yeah, it kind of makes me wonder if, you know, they had something going into that monitor or that TV or whatever you want to call it, you know, to have like a big picture. And then they had this little monitor for like a more professional um, picture, I guess. Because, yeah, these were... Oh, and actually, yeah, it looks like it... Yeah, I think my theory is correct. Because, yeah, it looks like it came from uh, the same place, Pierce, Utah. I'm not even sure where that is. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, apparently there's a school of those came. Looks like that TV. And then this came from the same school. And, yeah, and then there was also, like, these BNC cables. Yeah, anyway, I'm going to just take my brushes and stuff. I'm just going to clean up. I don't know, a little bit. I mean, at least I'll try to like blow it out, I guess. But yeah, I mean, really, this is pretty, <laughs> I mean, really clean. I, there's really not much at all to clean out. And I'm, I'm almost positive no one has opened this before and tried to clean it. <laughs> Usually, yeah, especially like schools and stuff, that's just not something they do. They just uh, usually just replace <laughs> instead of try to repair and clean. Yeah. I'm just kind of trying to figure out what's going on here. So it looks like it's got a, um, a board here, and then they've. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm actually. You know what? I'm going to actually try to take this out because I'm interested to see 
Um, if they, if this really was a TV, that then maybe Sony. I guess it says Sony of America on the back. Yeah, yeah, assembled in Mexico, but then uh, Sony Corporation of America. So maybe Sony of America just took this, um, like this TV model, and then outfitted it with BNC adapters for <laughs> some professional customers that wanted it. And actually, we can look at these diagrams too. Let's see what these say. Oh wow, this is actually really cool. So look at this, this is a service label. I have never seen one of these on the inside of a TV before, or a monitor or whatever. Yeah, look at this, it actually tells you where like all the potentiometers are and stuff. Wow, that's uh, wow, that's really cool. So, yeah, so then you can make adjustments because yeah, I'm positive this thing doesn't have a service menu. Uh, but yeah, here's basically your service manual. <laughs> oh, that's cool. And then there's this other label over here. So it says Trinitron and then I guess it's probably the the tube. Yeah, this is I guess it's just for all of these different tubes. And actually we can see the the tube model here on this sticker. Yeah. Yep, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's one of the ones <laughs> on that sticker on the inside shell. Yeah, this is cool. Of course you got your magnets and stuff for uh, geometry. <clears throat> Yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm just kind of curious, so I'm just going to take these screws out just to see what's underneath. Okay, there we go. Took those screws out. Let's see. Oh, it looks like, oh, it looks like there's actually a slot on there for something else. I wonder if you could do outfit this for us video or something. You can actually see that being a real possibility. Yeah, you can see, let's see if I can point to it with my thumb. Yeah, you can see there's a in and out a little circle there maybe it's for uh stereo audio that could be another other possibility that actually is probably more likely the essence it's just as one speaker they obviously just have the the one jack there that's probably what that is actually yeah that's cool i bet this thing could be rgb modded though um yeah well i'm sure it could but let me just say i assume it maybe could somewhat easily <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's a little older, so it may not have a jungle chip, but yeah, I bet, I bet it could be hard to be modded. But actually, just looking at it before, the composite video was already so good on it, I don't even know. I mean, I'm sure RGB would still look better, but I mean, sometimes, you know, composite's just good enough. Yeah, I've been looking around in here, and uh, I really just do not see a tuner at all. So yeah, I'm just going to say that they... Oh, maybe this maybe this model just never had a tuner. Maybe this is like a specific model. If anyone knows about this model, let me know in the comments. But uh, yeah, maybe this is just a model that was just like meant for, for professional use only pretty much. And it's really just a monitor basically. But anyway. Yeah, I brought this uh, monitor outside. I'm just going to start calling it a monitor from now on. But yeah, I brought it outside uh, because usually when I clean these out, there's a ton of dust in here. And I even brought a vacuum to try to get the extra dust <laughs> that blow that would blow away. But yeah, I actually probably could have realistically just cleaned this inside because, I mean, it's so clean already. But yeah, then I'm going to clean this stuff out with this. I have this device. It's like basically compressed air, but you can recharge it. And yeah, I think there's actually a newer model, but yeah, I'll leave a link to it in the description. Um, yeah, you can, you can see, just kind of blow all this stuff out and yeah, rechargeable and really nice. And then I also have these ESD brushes where you can, yeah, brush up all these electronics. Yeah, I'll leave affiliate links to them in the description. Okay, so I got this monitor put back together and uh, yeah, I'm also now using the output to that little JVC that I showed earlier. So yeah, I have the Terminator turned off on this one, but I have it turned on on this one so that it has the correct brightness levels on uh, both TVs. Yeah, it is interesting to <laughs> look at the difference. But yeah, and then also I noticed on the side of this uh, Sony, there actually was this thing. So yeah, this is like the flap that goes on the front here to cover the controls. And it was just taped on the side. So I don't know, I'll have to see if I can get to go back on. Um, but yeah, as you can see though, it actually does say it's a Trinitron color monitor. Yeah, SSM. 2010 so yeah interesting so I guess according to the front of the Trinitron of this thing 
It is a monitor, but according to the back, it's a TV. So I'm gonna go with the monitor though, as I explained before. I think my official designation of if something's a monitor or a TV is if it has a tuner built in and where this does definitely does not have a tuner built in, I'm gonna say it's a monitor. Yeah, anyway, if you like these videos, guys, uh, let me know what you think and make sure you like, subscribe, comment, all that great stuff. Yeah, thank you so much for watching and yeah, um, if you find one of these, uh, I don't know, rare monitors, I've never seen one before, but if you find one, I would definitely pick it up because uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. The speaker's pretty good on it too, by the way. Uh, yeah, don't really have any complaints. I've spent a lot of time watching videos and like movies on it since I did the first part of this video. And yeah, I played a bunch of games on it. And yeah, it's just really awesome. So yeah, um, yeah, really don't have any complaints other than that I do see a lot of dot crawls sometimes. So sometimes, right now I don't, but in some signals I do. So I wish it did have S video, or especially if it had RGB input, that'd be really cool. Then it would definitely be a monitor, especially in North America. But, uh, but yeah, if it at least had S video, that would be really nice. Maybe there's an S video mod I could do on it. I'll have to look at that. But even so, I mean, just regular composite still looks pretty good. Like there's a little bit of artifacts like here on Mario's arm. I don't know if you could see that or not. There we go. Pull that screen up again. Yeah, these dots in real life, they're kind of moving back and forth. But yeah, on the camera, it's just kind of, um, it's probably because I'm recording, recording 30 frames a second. So it's only catching, well, no, actually that doesn't make sense because this is 240p. Never mind, <laughs> that theory doesn't work. But yeah, these dots are just moving a little bit though on the, in actual real life. So um, yeah, anyway, but when you're staying back, it's really not that noticeable. And overall, it just looks absolutely awesome. And this monitor definitely looks new. <laughs> like I really don't think it's been used that much. So anyway, thanks for watching everyone. And we will talk to you later. Bye.